Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are going to look at the alternative complement pathway. Okay, so this is the final of the three complement pathways which we're going to look at. Okay, so we've looked now at the classical complement pathway which was uh, activated by antibody antigen complexes on the surface of a microbe. We've then looked at the uh, mannose binding lectin pathway which was activated by terminal mannose and glucose monosaccharides on polysaccharides and oligosaccharides which were either on the cell surface membrane or else attached to proteins on the cell surface membrane. Now what we're going to look at is the alternative pathway. Okay, right. So, let's just give the setup again. So, the setup is this. The complement proteins are produced by the liver and put into the blood and then when you get a microbe in a portion of your tissue, what that will lead to is the inflammatory response, which will lead to an increase in the permeability of the blood vessels in that area, specifically the capillaries and the venules, and that will lead to fluid and proteins moving between between endothelial cells, the gaps between endothelial cells, they'll move through the gaps between endothelial cells and out into the interstitial fluid, okay? And the, some of the proteins that you will be in this fluid that's moving out of the blood vessels will be complement proteins. And this uh, additional fluid that you are adding to the interstitial fluid will cause the swelling of the inflamed area, and it's known as an inflammatory exudate. Right, now, the complement proteins are then going to set up a cascade which is going to attack the invading microbe, basically. And we've looked at two of these cascades already, the classical complement cascade and the uh, lectin cascade. Now what we're going to do is look at this alternative pathway. Okay, so, the first thing to say is that we need to look at complement protein 3, C3. So basically, in the other two pathways, in the classical pathway and the uh, lectin pathway, what happened is that you had to assemble C4B, C2A complexes, which then catalyze the breakdown of C3 into uh, a big subunit, which is called C3B. Okay, so we'll let this one be C3B. And then a small subunit here, and we'll let that one, and that one's called C3A. Okay, so let's get a little bit of colour on here. So we'll colour in C3 in this purple colour here. Okay, and it's been broken down into C3B here, the big subunit and then we're cutting off this little subunit, C3A. Now, in both the classical pathway and also the lectin pathway, you had to build enzymes known as C3 convertases, which chopped C3 into these two portions. Now, in the alternative pathway, the thing which starts it off is not an enzyme catalyzing this reaction. Instead, all the time, a little bit of the C3 uh, in your blood will be breaking down into C3A and C3B. So C3 is inherently unstable and will undergo this breakdown reaction spontaneously, basically. So in the alternative pathway, the thing which initiates this is a spontaneous breakdown. Now, very few C3 proteins actually will be undergoing this spontaneous breakdown at any one time, but there will be some basically. Okay, now you might think, well, isn't this slightly dangerous for uh, the cells of the body? Because C3B will surely end up sticking to glycoproteins on the surface of the cell, and you are quite right. So, um, if we've got a normal healthy cell of the body here, so this is a, this is a normal cell, so this is a human cell, okay, then this cell will have on its surface glycoproteins, that um, C3B combine to, okay? So in blue here, this is a glycoprotein, and then what can happen is that onto that glycoprotein combined are C3B, and you would think that this was extremely dangerous because C3B 
is supposed to um, lead to the death of this cell, basically, through opsonization of that cell and also uh, through uh, the establishing of, um, well, see, the establishing of membrane attack complexes. Okay, so you'd think that the production of the C3B was dangerous. Okay, so I'll just label this up. So here is the C3B, and it's bound to a glycoprotein, but it's not. And the reason is that our cells have certain uh, molecules in their membranes which are designed to stop the C3B from being able to do anything. So basically, when the C3B is bound to glycoproteins on the surface of the cell, there are other proteins on the surface of the cell which can also bind to that C3B and which will stop it from functioning. So let me draw one of these proteins. So this is a C3B inhibitor here. Okay, so our normal cells of the body have proteins which are C3B inhibitors which will bind to C3B and stop it from uh, causing opsonization of the cell and also stop it from uh, establishing uh, the beginning of membrane attack complexes. Okay, so this is a C3B inhibitor here in green. In addition, we have another type of molecule uh, that's on the cell surface membrane, which is known as cyanic acid. And this will generally be attached to other molecules which are on the cell surface membrane, such as proteins. So you might have a protein on the cell surface membrane, let's say here, which might have a cyanic acid molecule attached to it, which I'll show like that. Okay, so cyanic acid is that little thing in orange here, which I'll just try and... There we go, it's in orange now. So this is cyanic acid. Okay, and... Uh, then you've got some protein, which I'll colour in in blue again. Okay, and it will again be called a glycoprotein, because as you'll see, cyanic acid is actually a sugar. Okay, right. So what is this molecule, cyanic acid? Most people have heard of cyanic acid, uh, but when you actually ask them to tell you what it is, uh, they don't have a clue. So, cyanic acid, what is usually meant by cyanic acid, and it can mean different things, but usually what people mean when they say cyanic acid, your best guess will be that they mean N-acetyl neuraminic acid, okay, which has the rather fantastic initials NANA, neuraminic acid. So another name for this is, it's often abbreviated to N for N, a for acetyl, N for neuraminic, and then acid, so nana for short. Okay, so to understand what this means, we need to know what the structure of neuraminic acid is. So let me now show you the structure of neuraminic acid. Okay, so neuraminic acid, let's draw the skeletal structure of it. Basically, it's a sugar molecule, so it has this six-membered ring where five of the members are carbons and one of the members is oxygen. So this is just like glucose, just like galactose, just like uh, mannose, all of these have this same six-membered ring here, okay? And then uh, off this carbon up here, what you're going to have is you're going to have two things coming off, so it's going to be quite different from uh, glucose, okay? So the thing that's coming out of the page towards us and everything here is really important that we know the optical isomerism of it. So the thing that's coming out of the page towards us is a carboxylic acid group. And I'll just write this as Ku rather than um, write putting its skeletal structure because its skeletal structure is actually harder on the eyes than just its molecular formula there. We all know what that means, whereas the skeletal structure is a bit scarier in that case. Okay, and then... Going into the board, you then have an alcohol group, okay? So off this carbon up here, you have a carboxylic acid group coming out of the page at us and an alcohol group going into the page away from us, okay? Uh, then you have just two hydrogens off this carbon here, so we don't show those because this is a skeletal structure. Then off this uh, third carbon down here, we have an alcohol group. Okay, and this is coming out of the page towards us. You'll then have a hydrogen coming off that carbon, which we don't show because we're doing a, at least in part, skeletal structure. So that will be going into the page away from us. And then off this second carbon here, 
we then have an amino group going into the page away from us and of course this carbon will also have a hydrogen atom coming off it which will be coming out of the page at us. Okay now the thing that comes off this first carbon then is another carbon. Okay so let me show this. So this will be coming out of the page towards us. Okay so it's coming out of the page towards us and then it will ha also have a hydrogen uh, that's going away from us, it's going into the page away from us, and then, again I'm going to show this temporarily by its um, molecular formula rather than by its skeletal formula because it will make things slightly uh, easier on the eye. So we've got a carbon coming out of the page at us, a hydrogen going into the board away from us. Okay, so now this carbon has another carbon coming off it which will draw in the plane here, so this is in this, a plane just above uh, the plane that the ring is in, basically. Okay, and then this then needs two other things coming off it. Okay, now one of them will be coming towards us and one of them going away from us, basically. Okay, so it has an alcohol group going away from us into the page, okay, up here, and they also have a hydrogen coming off at this sort of an angle over here that's coming towards us, okay? And this is a chiral center, so these optical isomer uh, points do matter, basically. Okay, and then off this carbon, it's again a chiral carbon, so you're going to have carbon over here, which then has an alcohol group in, and these you can all imagine are within the plane, so that's nice and simple. And then this carbon just has two hydrogens off, so that's not a chi chiral carbon, so we don't need to worry about that. So there are those two hydrogens there, okay? But this is going to be a chiral carbon. It's going to have one hydrogen coming off it and one alcohol group coming off it. And the alcohol group is going to be coming out of the page at us, like so. Okay, and the hydrogen will go into the page away from us, like so. Okay, um, so that is the structure of neuraminic acid. This isn't cy cyanic acid yet, this is neuraminic acid. Okay, now cyanic acid is this N-acetyl neuraminic acid. So what we're going to do is add an acetyl group onto this amino group of the neuraminic acid to get N-acetyl neuraminic acid. Okay, so an acetyl group let me just um, talk about what an acetyl group is. An acetyl group looks like this. It's got a carbonyl group with then a methyl group coming off it. So it's what you get from acetic acid. So let me show you the structure of acetic acid. Acetic acid is the two carbon fully saturated carboxylic acid. Okay, it's what would now be referred to as ethanoic acid rather than acetic acid. But acetic acid is the old uh, biochemist name for this molecule. Okay, it's the acid which is in vinegar. Okay, so what we're going to do is form an amide link between acetic acid and this amino group here. So if I draw the amino group out in full, here it is with its two hydrogens, and then it's attached to the carbon up here, okay? Then what we're going to do is bring in our um, acetic acid molecule here. Okay, and let me just move this page up a little bit. So we're going to bring in our acetic acid molecule here. We're going to take off that alcohol group from the carboxylic acid group, and we're going to take off the hydrogen from the nitrogen. We'll bind the ox sorry, we'll bind the alcohol group to the hydrogen to make water. And that's why this reaction is known as a condensation reaction, because it produces water. Okay? And we're then going to bind that nitrogen to the carbon of the ac acetic acid molecule, and the hence we've just added on this acetyl group. So acetic acid is the um, acid molecule, the acetyl group is the uh, carboxylic acid with the alcohol group taken off. Okay, so this is acetyl group. Okay, and we'll end up binding this nitrogen to this carbon here. And when you add an acetyl group like that to the amino group of neuraminic acid, you get N-acetyl neuraminic acid, and that's what is meant by sialic acid. So often, what you will have is sialic acid molecules attached to proteins on the surface of the cell, and sialic acid can also bind to C3B and inhibit it. 
Okay, so that's what our cells have. They have these C3B inhibitors, and they also have cyanic acid um, sugars on their surface. And both of these things will inhibit C3B if it actually binds to the cell and stops the C3B from attacking the cell. Whereas, invading cells, microbes, will not have uh, these things on their cell surface membranes. So when C3B binds to glycoproteins on their membranes, it will continue on with the pathway which we'll discuss in the next video.